Well, good morning. Can you hear me well? Yeah, thank you very much indeed for inviting me. And today I have a, a big, big challenge. What everybody fears, i.e., evaluation. Probably there will be more questions than answers in my presentation, but I'd like to point out some of the key aspects that can actually help us all out. Let's start with the assessment. Assessment as a term and in etymological terms. Albert Balu, who, which comes from Latin, implies val evaluating, giving a value. What do we value? What do we do? These actions of arts in health, we should be able to assess them to see if they are truly efficient. And evaluations, what do they value mainly? Well, the adequacy of the action. Are they adequate? Do they work? Do they comply with the goals of our assessment and the degree of efficiency in terms of the result we get? Let's go to the essential aspects of the assessment. Some of you probably know it already, and some of you may not know it. Anything that you need or that if you have any doubts, do not hesitate to ask me. We always concentrate on the design of the action, of the action of arts in health. But what we need is to define from the very onset the design of the assessment. In other words, we focus on which key concepts should the action include, but we do not think about how to assess it. And this is a key aspect that we should have as part of the protocol from the very onset. We should also be able to look beyond the positivist or pro-positivist paradigm in which we have all been trained. And this is part of the quantitative methodology. Do we go beyond? Do we look for mixed methodologies? People feel like expressing themselves. And oftentimes, we carry out actions to improve people's quality of life, to improve their mental health, and through other methodologies, like the qualitative methodology, we can actually respond, we can get some of the assessment answers. The assessment should be useful. It should be useful to determine that the action can be applied in practice. It should be feasible. We should be able to do it whilst we are in the midst of the assessment process. It should not complicate things. It should be realistic and real with regards to what we can measure. It should be rigorous rigorous in a scientific sense and with any type of methodology, quantitative, qualitative or mixed. I was talking during the coffee break with some people from the public public health agency of Boston, of, of Catalonia, who is they are using a mixed methodology, quantitative, qualitative. It gives you this opening, this holistic approach to respond to how people are exper ex experiencing that action. And it should be ethical. Why ethical? We're dealing with people. As w How have they experienced the assessment? How has their well-being and mental health improved based on the data protection law? You need to sign a well-informed consent, and that is related to rigor. The assessment process itself. Here there are some key aspects. First of all, we should know what we want to assess. If our action, what it actually wants to do, is to assess mental health, then we should look for, I mean, we should have a questionnaire, an instrument related to mental health, to mental well-being. If we want to assess the improvement of our mental health, we look for that. The quality of life, instruments validated, a validated questionnaire that is about this subject matter. Let's not forget, there are many, many types of questionnaires, and they should be validated, because if not, you lose the scientific rigor. And we should also define what are the key moments to carry out the action. And I go to a second point here. It is always interesting to carry out a pre-assessment, a basal assessment, and a post-assessment. And if we want to see the time effects, we should go beyond. It is important, therefore, to define clearly in that 
assessment protocol we should carry out, the basal aspect, the post-intervention aspects, and also what is the effect of that intervention in time. And that means that if the intervention has lasted for 10 weeks, well, after 10 weeks, we should have an assessment, but also at the end of the year to see if these effects are lost or long-lasting. And then methodologies, other instruments, and techniques. And who will be participating in the assessment exercise? That's key, too. Who are the participants of the assessment exercise? Who are the people who have participated in that action? But is, if it's about caregivers, well, they should also be interested in knowing what's the effect. I mean, the families or the professional people who are applying that action. There are many agents involved that we want them to participate in that assessment process. And the assessment has a cost in itself. Therefore, when you prepare your assessment research programs, you should never forget to actually do a budget for it. It should be part of the general and specific goals for your study. Assessment methodologies. We always have a tendency to use instruments or questionnaires, validated instruments, but here I'd like to go beyond. And this is also because my training is has taught me. I mean, we're looking for the story, people's stories. They should tell us how that intervention fed with them. With the quantitative, we can improve we can know how their life has improved, but with a qualitative one, the how and how how did it improve? The fact of going to a museum or participating in an action as we have just been told, how has their mental health improved? And we can only know that through the narrative, through the stories that people tell us. And here we have very many, many methodologies and techniques like group interviews, individual interviews. We have artistic techniques. And given that we're talking about arts in health, you can have photo photo licitation, which are techniques through the use of pictures that allow the person to express how she or he feels. We should use these complementary or supplementary technologies which will help us to determine whether the arts in health intervention has actually worked out or not. And then the complementarity of both methodologies, the quantitative one, to define whether the person has improved two or three score points in his or her life quality, and also to know why he or she has improved, because it will allow us to tailor make the intervention. And here we get into the pilot phase. It is important. I mean, the actions we carry out and the assessments we carry out in arts in health, it is important to have a pilot and to know the professional people's perspectives, the patient's or the perspective, and also to modulate this intervention based on their experiences. If we carry, if we have this pilot, we will have a guarantee that all interventions actually work. Why? Because we'll be adapting ourselves to the needs and preferences of people, both those who apply them and those who receive them. Um, evaluation or assessment processes phases. Okay, I'm, I'm actually talking in general terms. I mean, my, my presentation should last for many, many hours, but I've been allotted very little time. But, you know, we will meet each other again in other congresses. It's very important to define other programs' goals. What is being assessed and why is it being assessed? What do we want to assess? We want to specify the framework, the paradigm, the variables, the aspects. I'm not talking only about variables because I'm not talking about the qualitative methodology, but also the theme, the topic, from a qualitative point of view. We need to choose those techniques or instruments that are most adequate. We have a myriad of techniques, techniques that are very creative. Photo voice, what it actually does is to give a voice to the community. It's a technique that's very much used amongst teenagers. Oftentimes, teenagers have a hard time 
expressing themselves in group interviews and through Instagram or through the social media, photography gives them a power to express what they feel. And so this sort of intervention can be very useful. Information analysis, all of the information we have, you know, in the qualitative methodology and in the quantitative methodology, we merge it together and we use it in a way that can actually be publishable. We need to generate evidence out of all of these actions and all of these interventions. Yesterday, today, we're talking about a very interesting actions that help us build up a roadmap of different interventions that can be carried out and how we can generate evidence and what works and what doesn't work. And in the assessment, we will know which are the ones that work and whether we need to keep on applying them or not. The presentation of the results in a scientific format, but also the results presentation addressed to the citizens so that the citizens know about the results that have worked out, those actions that have actually been worked out so that they can adhere to them. And for policymakers and for stakeholders, people who are key in the Ministry of Health for this to work out. We can publish scientific articles or policy briefs, which are these essential recommendations for things to work out. And let me draw some conclusions now, because I have just used all of the time that had been allotted to me. Okay, the assessment allows us to generate evidence. And let me insist on this. If there is evidence, we can know whether we can transfer those interventions to other contexts and whether they can actually be implemented. The assessment must be a goal in itself of our health in arts actions. I was looking for a checklist, for a checklist to see if I'm missing something or if there is any document that could help you out when it comes to assessing interventions in arts in health. We do not yet have a checklist. Another conclusion, science gives us many instruments and many types of designs that allow us to establish the rigor that this assessment needs. Let's use them because within the quantitative methodology and the qualitative methodology, we have a variety, a large variety of systems that we can use. And maybe the hardest one is the fact that the implementation of arts in health can only be carried out effectively if we carry out assessment exercises and if we generate evidence. Nothing is useful if we, I mean, we can may generate many actions, but we need to know what's the impact on our population. If not, it's useless. And um, in addition, from a context point of view, they can be useful here, but maybe they cannot be useful elsewhere. So we have to carry out implementation assessments in different contexts. And that's all. That's what I wanted to share with you about the assessment. I don't know whether I have generated more confusion or questions, but I believe that these are the essential premises we need to bear in mind when we talk about assessment. Thank you.